We got the signal. Hey, Whoa. hey. Hey. You know, hey. last week I was talking about we have the signal and me saying hey, hey, hey. Yeah, I didn't oh. even think we were talking about anything actually. Are well, you... I was trying to take the show towards a, a like a grittier kind of direction. Ah, you mean like like Taxi Driver and old school Robert Just De Niro grittier, Sandy. more street. You know what I mean? Because that's where I grew up. I grew up in the street. I don't know if you know this. I was raised in the streets. The, the mean streets of Toronto. That's right. Many people had to step over you to, to get to the library. People were mugging you for your maple syrup you had in your pocket. <laughs> because that's what we did back then. There wasn't much. That's right. You, you, got, you, you came from the school of hard knocks. Yeah, man. I got rolled for my snowshoes once. Robbed for my snowshoes. Is that right? Where were yeah. you sleeping? I was in the streets, raised in the streets. Why do you need snowshoes in the streets? Um, well, because the streets have snow. And were they real snowshoes or were they tennis rackets? They were like in the cartoons, tennis rackets with string. <laughs> like in the cartoons. Anyways, so I, I don't know if I want to take the show um, urban anymore. So the big announcement for this show is we're going a little softer, a little bit more design, a bit more sleeker, more towards fashion and design and and like leather daddy. Women's issues yeah, and yeah, things like that. that. I want my own, I want it kind of Oprah. I wanted a very Oprah sort of feeling, this public access show. Oh. I want to own it myself. See what I did? Oh, own? I see, like, and me more touchy-feely. Yeah, all and, right. And, and, and sensitive. Yes, okay. Wow, right. I didn't know you had it in you, Phil. Yeah, well, you're about to see it come out. So, without further ado, welcome to PATV. Oh. Hi, hi, hi. Hello! Hello, yes. Hello! Okay, we're back. All right, we're back. Mm. Men on a men show. That's why yeah. I got a construction worker. No, it's not your greatest male fantasy. It's, this is real happening here. Who are you, sir? Spit it out! Talk. I'm the efficiency expert. The efficiency expert. Okay, I've, apparently there have been blowbacks and cut downs and short ups. And this guy is trouble. When he shows up, it's like being deported in TV land. What, when you say cut, you, so you, you're cutting back? Well, I'm just trying to do my job here, guys, all right? Uh... But isn't an efficiency expert usually an executive? Why are you wearing a hard hat? Well, technically, this is a warehouse and a construction zone. You guys are all supposed to be wearing hard hats, but... So my but life's been in danger right? this whole time. You see what I do for TV for you, the viewer, and the ladies? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got this giant console here. Yeah, cut where? <laughs> what are you talking about? I, never know. It's I feel like I'm an improv where queen. Is it? <laughs> Down here, okay. Well, it's supposed to be here, and you guys are supposed... Do you guys actually use this thing? <laughs> this is your department. You don't want me to talk, man. Yeah, well, well, we're trying well. to do some budget cutbacks. If you're not using it, our producer tells us to use it all the time. But we just, you know. Sure. Sometimes I, sometimes I put my sandwich on it. All right. I guess we're we're gonna have to cut that out. Good. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I hate to lose it. Sorry, buddy. All what right. about these screens here? What screens? <laughs> do they have to run at all times of the day? Uh, um, I think they do. I'm we, just we could put every member of the village people okay, on Okay, it's a like. lot of TV sets, I know. Well, we've got two small already. Small screens. They're small screens, but they're running all the time. They're using up power. Uh, I'm sure you guys don't really need all of these, do you? Dude, you're cutting off my legs here. How am I supposed to walk? Oh, good acting, Phil. Love it. Love it. Sorry, guys. It's got to go, too. It's like Brokeback Show. What? <laughs> no. If I had a tongue, I'd be lisping too, Phil. But we're gonna go to the music videos. All right, let's go to music videos. Um, we'll fix all this stuff. We'll work something out, we'll right? We'll talk about it in the meantime. Yeah. We'll see what we'll we can do. We'll work something out. I think I got you. Got a fast horse And I ride with him Pick a good course Look up to the sky I get older My talent flows to me 
It gets colder Someone blankets me It's easy It's not that hard to me Just leave me I wanna be here alone It's easy It's not that hard to me Just leave me I wanna be here alone Stormy weather Coming my way There's a wipe The smell from my face Easy come Easy go That's the way it is Keep on chipping Chipping at that stone Got a bed
dramatic scene what's happening let's fill them in there we have been... a guy with a hard hat who claims to be an efficiency expert 
and, and cutbacks are being made. Listen, you know, public access television was also affected by the downturn in, in the market and um, exotic insurance derivatives. That's right, especially the derivatives. Right, so what we bring you drama here. So we're gonna, it's really, it's a fantasy show. It's every person's fantasy, this show. So I'm gonna play the, the, the housewife. So do you work out or something? <laughs> hey guys, I just wanted to ask you before we get into the working out. <laughs> I appreciate you noticing. Um, there's this pole here. Don't touch my pole. No one touches my pole. Well, why is the pole here? Because, uh... Why, why is the, the pole here? It's part of the premise of the show! Do you guys know how many hours of rendering time this takes in post-production to put in this dumb pole? Well, if there's no pole, how are we gonna have babies in the world? <laughs> well, you bring up a good <laughs> point. Can't see what I did? I... There's also this... <laughs> I make myself laugh sometimes. Wait, what's behind the pole? <laughs> is he just on a table here? Oh my god! Uh, it's like a Three's Company yeah. episode! <laughs> What's in the pole? Just put it in the shower pole. No, All right, we're gonna get rid of the pole and the, the mat. Didn't That's what he said. Oh! There she we go. Said. It's a beautiful table. It's a beautiful pole. All right, welcome back. Oh yeah. According to the script, we have uh, a guy behind us who is uh, now trying to cut back on everything. Yes. Cutbacks, blowbacks, blowups, cutups, cutouts, cut-ins, cut-ins, cuts here on the show, happening for you. That's right. Way to read the script, Phil. Yep, yeah, that's it. That's it. And I'll be being interrupted at any point. Yeah, we're, guy waiting, back we're, here. we're waiting for the improv actor to come yep. ahead and uh, start to. What, what do you got there, uh, Mr. Efficiency Dude? Spalding. What is that thing over there? Oh, this? Yeah, that thing. Oh, um, in the entertainment world, they call that the beauty cam. That's the one that's closer to my face and shows the intrigue and the what's going on in my head for the viewer. It, it's so they metaphorical for the eye. So it's the fill cam. That's why it says fill cam on it. <laughs> that's got all those effects and stuff. Oh, yes, doctor. You know, we are here to make some cuts. I mean, I don't think you really need all those effects and things, right? I mean, that's a lot of hours in post-production. That's... What are you saying? It's the same thing as the Are you going to get rid of this? Yeah, we're getting rid of it. Why but Sorry, guys. We'll have, we'll have to rely on your talent. That gave the people double fill, in a sense. So they were getting more for their money, I think. I, Listen, I'm, I'm just trying angry. to do my I job over here, it was like here, a bargain okay? bang. I think it was like seeing orange juice on sale at No Frills for like a dollar. That's for the village people jokes before. Sorry. No fill cap. I can't believe you the went there. Village really people are a fine group of entertainers. <laughs> can't believe you I'm gonna keep looking there. around if you guys don't mind. Yeah, I can't believe we went to the village people on me. I had nowhere to go. You go to the village people. We can go Phil, to the YMCA. Has to stop. Or we could join the navy. I'm, I'm just gonna go ignore you guys and do my job. People. I go nowhere. I'm stuck. All right. What other cutbacks? What else do you see that uh, you want to get rid of? Nothing for now, but... Are you sure? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, man, it, d d does web content cost too much for you freaks yeah. or what? Or something with teeth or eyes? No, <laughs> that should be fine for now. Oh. oh, trying to get rid of me, are you Phil? Look at you, selling me out? No, what? Yeah. What? I mean, that's gone. What? Oh! I got one, look at me, I only have one camera. I'm half the man I used to be. I it's like finding out you're though. adopted taking away that second camera. Blame the producers, guys. Blame the producers. I blame society. I blame society for making me live in the streets and making me for what I am. Where's my light? There. I blame society for making me the hard man I am. It looks my mother did the best job she could with me and my little brother. See, Phil can make speeches about absolutely nothing. That's what the <laughs> Phil cam is about. See, Without that. You took that away from the audience. You're ripping my legs off, man. How am I supposed to walk? TV, 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 Internet. Well, I certainly can be seen as a source of opinions, and you can too if you just go over to igotopinions.com and uh, buy a, um, yeah, you know, you know, a lot of people do the whole shameless plug thing, but has anyone ever really tried the other kind? 
And you can too. You just head over to I got opinions dot com and uh oh god buy a shirt or is it, oh the oh the dirt won't come off and you oh. anyways in this week's episode we'll be reviewing another source of opinions, a little old website known as TVtropes.com. In a nutshell, it's a six-year-old website, not unlike Wikipedia, except instead of trying to categorize everything in existence, they're just focused on tropes, which are conventions and devices and storytelling, not unlike cliches, with the important difference being that we're not necessarily sick to death of them yet. TV Trope's biggest plus is also its biggest minus. It's incredibly engrossing and therefore incredibly addictive. Now, a Wikipedia binge can get pretty bad, but Wikipedia can't trap you in the kind of insidious loop that TV Tropes can. You foolishly enter the loop by looking up a show you like and reading the list of tropes that the website's community have assigned to it. But then, as you're doing this, you see a trope that maybe you aren't sure what it is. Which is often, since many tropes have less than self-explanatory names. And so you click on it. But oh dear, now you're on a page that explains the trope along with a list of other series that contain it. Oh, you didn't know that series had that trope? Best click on the link and see what other tropes have been given to that series. Soon enough, you see another interesting trope on that series page. And voila, you've created a perpetual distraction machine fueled by the blood, sweat, and tears of an infinite amount of nerds laboring over an infinite amount of Cheeto. And now, reflexively, you might want to hyperbolically describe TV tropes as being like crack or heroin. But at least when you're addicted to heroin, you can count on the drug methadone to help you kick the habit. No amount of methadone will help break you out of a recursive loop of research, discovering cute names for things that you already knew about because you were already familiar with the show. Finding out what tropes an unfamiliar series has is about as engaging as hearing your mom tell you all about how her friend's sister's daughter finally worked out how to projectile vomit and sing at the same time. That's a bad example, really. I'd pay money to see that. But then... I am a bit depraved, as evidenced in my still available uh, a series of instructional DVDs which, uh, oh god, you could buy for the low, low price of your dignity and self-respect 99. In their attempt to try and cover everything that can happen in a story, the website can become kind of stupid. For example, the trope, by the way, seems to get applied to every single story that ever has a bisexual character in it. The character's sexuality isn't a major plot point or hook or anything, it's just there. That means that it isn't a trope because their sexuality isn't a theme or device any more than my jazzy pink arsehole is an allegory. And uh, jazzy. Jazzy. Ah, I'm certainly not immune to the tender tug of arguing on the internet, which does bring us to at least one half of the appeal of the site. Disagreeing with the content of the site is easily as, if not more, engaging than agreeing with it. Whether as a page editor or over in the discussion forums, if you want to tell someone that they should be shot for disagreeing with your appraisal of the homoerotic undertones contained within the relationship between Fox Mulder and his I Want to Believe poster, then by crumb, you can have it with all the vigor your Dr. Pepper infused nervous system can muster. Ha ha, only nerdy computer users eat junk food. In the end, should you bother going over to the website or even becoming a member of its online community? Well, hmm, I must confess, I've been a little rough on TV tropes, probably because I am profoundly irritated by the idea that all of fiction can be broken up into lots of cutely named little Lego bricks. But they don't take themselves too seriously, and neither should anyone else. In fact, I double dog dare any of you watching this to head on over to the website and make a page for in a handful of minutes. No, no, wait, 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 I, I take that back, I take that, uh, oh, oh man, now it's official.
everybody. I'm Crandall. I'm Mercy. We are Armchair Directors. We did it! We finally did it! We're reviewing the last huge summer blockbuster movie, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. And they have sort of saved the best for last. Because I thought this was amazing! Rise of the Planet of the Apes is easily one of the best movies of summer 2011. Surprisingly so. Because I thought this movie looked pretty cool, but I didn't expect it to be this smart, mm -hmm. have such good pacing, and really awesome special effects and action. Yes, the big shocker for me, since I am not a CGI guy at all, is Caesar. Caesar is the main ape that gets super intelligence and, and rallies all of the other apes and stuff. And the big question is, how is this thing going to look? And it looks so amazing. This is the best CGI performance that I've seen since Gollum. And it's interesting because Andy Serkis yep. is wearing the motion capture suit for Caesar. And it's funny because there's something about him. He was Gollum. He was King Kong. Mm. He was Caesar in Planet of the Apes. Three of probably the best, most emotive CG creatures that we've seen in a long time. And it seems like, you know, King Kong was the warm-up. He got sort of the mannerisms down. And in this one, he just took it to another level. The face of Caesar is so emotive, mm -hmm. the way he moves. And because when he starts the movie, he's sort of a happy-go-lucky chimp. He's like a cute, cuddly yeah. pet. And like partway through the movie, he just starts to turn. And it's not only just that we see his face, but like the performance, his mannerisms, the way he carries himself just starts to get cold and detached and like an ape who is going to start a crazy uprising. But the thing I like is he is always justified. And you do feel those little um, hints along the way that he's starting to get colder and, and harder as he's being treated worse and worse by humans. Yeah. But everything he does in the movie, and I started to really pay attention to this as, as we went along, everything he does is justified. He is always justified. Well, and they do that because in this movie, you really root for the apes. Yeah, the apes are the good guys in this movie. This is the first uh, monster movie I can think of where the monsters are the good guys and the humans are the villains. So when the apes finally do start to give us our comeuppance, you're cheering. You're like, yes, yes! I want to see them take down these people who have treated these apes so poorly. Exactly. And even James Franco, who is sort of our human, you know... Liaison. Yeah, liaison to this world. He's fine... But there are a few moments where you're like, come on, James, like stand up for Caesar, do more. And he doesn't. So then yeah. you're on the side of the apes. You yeah. just want to see these apes get super smart and wipe us out and, you know, ride around on horses. The really great thing about this movie is that it's a slow burn. Mm -hmm. It is a very, it's not boring. It, it's not slow paced, but it's a great bubbling, simmering thing. Right, that's it's a just... pot boiler building and building and, and Caesar coming to prominence and, and amassing his army. And the great thing is they didn't cram everything into this movie because if you've seen the original which was made 937 years ago there's a lot of setup to do to get to the point where the entire planet is devastated and run by apes and humans mm -hmm. are reverted to cavemen and mute. They didn't try to get everything in this movie no. to, to make it you know the direct prequel to the original Planet of the Apes, there is still room for two or three or four other movies in between. And they have basically said that this is sort of setting up a new trilogy if it takes off and it looks like it is going to be a hit. I hope so. Which, especially when word of mouth gets out there, that it is sort of a thinking man's blockbuster because they don't just have stuff blow up for no random reason all the time. Mm -hmm. It's very slow. There are good characters. There's lots of character work in the beginning. And then there are long chunks where we are just with the apes, and there's not much dialogue, mm -hmm. but it's all compelling, all really interesting, and just the last half hour of this movie is insane. And it's a lesson to filmmakers. Less is more. You know, in those scenes with no dialogue whatsoever, it's all just emotive, It's and it's primates. It's these monkeys mm -hmm. uh, interacting with each other. Are They draw me in more than a lot of movies with with dialogue and, and Oscar-winning uh, actors. Yeah. You know, it's so it draws you in and you can tell what the apes are thinking. And it's all done through subtlety, very subtle eye movement and, and body gestures. It's all really great. Absolutely. Time for best part. Worst part. Uh, best part, I'm going to say Caesar. 
Caesar from start to finish. Incredible, incredible character, great arc, uh, very noble, heartwarming character. I mean, when, you know, I almost teared up twice in the movie. <laughs> now, you know, I didn't cry because I'm a very tough guy. But when you uh, get your heartstrings pulled by a CGI character twice in the same movie, that is pretty amazing. An honorable mention uh, I got to give to a really shocking, shocking moment that left the entire audience with their jaw on the floor. I won't give it away, yep. but it does take place when Draco, uh, shortly after Draco Malfoy utters the classic Charlton Heston line. That was a Luke, I am your father moment. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, and the worst part is that despite how intelligent the movie is, and it's about a serum, which makes apes super intelligent and, mm -hmm. and even helps humans uh, regenerate damaged brain uh, portions and become more intelligent. There are a few idiot plot points in the movie. Things that need to happen and the writers just went, okay, we need this to happen. How do we get this to happen? Yeah. So there's a scene where a human gets contaminated with this deadly virus. And the way that happens is he just is wearing a simple little rinky-dink mask that yep. gets knocked off his face. You'd think that they'd be in biohazard suits when they're dealing with this really extremely dangerous stuff idiot plot point and that happens a few times you can either go with it or you can nitpick and if you get hung up on those things you're going to miss out on an incredibly enjoyable movie well and that one that you mentioned bugged me only because that plot point seems like something that they're setting up for a sequel and didn't really pay off much in this movie mm -hmm. so moments like that they even could have cut out and it wouldn't have made that much of a difference to this movie but it seems like they're laying the groundwork for future installments. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say overall, worst part, there are some great actors in here who don't have a whole lot to do. Lithgow. Lithgow, you know, I, it, they walk such a fine line with the Alzheimer's plot where we have to see the terribleness of this disease, but we don't want to be annoyed by a character. You know, so he doesn't get much to do. Um, he's in like 10 minutes of the movie. Brian Cox is usually awesome, and he's got like two lines. Yeah. And you got Brian Cox, and he's only got two lines. So a couple of those people are sort of wasted. But, you know, best part is we don't really care about the humans in this movie very much anyway. Yeah. Because the apes are so awesome. Mm -hmm. Andy Serkis as Caesar, easily one of the best performances you've seen. And the ape action, especially on the Golden Gate Bridge... <sighs> is so cool that you have to see it and i really liked that this movie wasn't afraid to do massive time jumps to sort of cut out the superfluous stuff yep. the first 15 minutes of the movie covers a decade of time yeah so i was really glad to see that and just basically best part extremely good pacing and the effects and action are top notch mm -hmm. Back from web content. Oh, I love the web. I I'm looking at a very odd place, Phil, because my eyes are no longer working. Yeah, you got shut down, baby. Look, everything's gone. I know. Look, he, did th he took that away. He took this away. He took that away. He they've took it all away. They've destroyed our show to make it more efficient. I still have my Phil cam, but it doesn't say Phil cam. Yeah, so I'm doing song. okay. I don't need Boy. all this stuff. I just need you. Yeah. And the green screen. Sure. It, yeah. Okay. Sure. Sure. Um, what have you been surfing on the web lately? Get, to give me something interesting. Oh. Oh. Well. well <laughs> I always I, catch I, you. I, 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 can we talk about that on the air? <laughs> uh, can't we? Of course we can. You loafer. Okay. Well, uh, I always like watching fail stuff. People falling. I laugh. Oh, I love yeah. watching people hurt themselves. That's, that's eternally always. You know, as Jim Henson said, pain is funny. Pain is funny. It makes me feel good about myself. <laughs> and scare tactics. See that show? Not that you should watch this before that, but uh, oh, that's on there. oh, one of my. Those. I have a friend who's who is the producer of the Scare Tactics show. Really? Oh yeah. I like that show. It's funny, dude. It is funny. Okay, and uh, yeah, we got shut down. Looks like we can't pay our bills, but that's okay. This is what my apartment looked like when I was in university. Is it? No, the bills never got shut down. I didn't shut down the, the heat. Uh, did you go to university? Um, one year. Oh, 
Yes. Cool. Yes. You, you could start, You should start your own school, Phil. I should have my own institute, I think. Uh, I would call it the Phil Guerrero Institute. I would offer things like PhDs in like, uh, Leather I don't daddies? Know, retail packaging. And uh, you get a master's in computer repair or, uh, you know, something. A doctorate of beard spray. <sighs> sure, beard spray. Beard spraying doctorate or a master's in oven repair. <laughs> Are there any certificate courses, Phil? Yes, VCR repair. <laughs> and uh, you know what? And I'm gonna do the old school way. I'm gonna advertise on the back of match packs and then just put the boxes of all the careers and then all you have to do is just check off the box, send it in with your $500 cash and then I send you the degree. And then you take it somewhere and see what they say. Wow. You know what, Phil? Now my eyes are really looking down because I'm feeling really sad. <laughs> Why? It's, it's not just a mechanical feel. I don't know, maybe my eyes are looking down because I'm sad, and maybe I'm sad because my eyes are looking down. I don't know what. <sighs> I hate people who talk about themselves all the time. Anyway, so I went to the store. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. All right. You didn't even need to do that illustration, Phil. This show See, is always about you talking about yourself. <laughs> I love it. In fact, we should call the show Enough About Me. I, I wanted to call it Keep It On Phil. <laughs> Just whatever's whatever's happened, man. Keep it on Phil. Like, Feeling it in. Phil. Keep your eyes on Phil. If the building is falling next to you, you better watch Phil, cause something just might happen. <laughs> you know? That's what we're, everybody's waiting for something to happen. The tsunami's behind you, but keep your eye on me, cause I just might be funny. <laughs> oh, you're funny, Phil. That's why the camera's on you. Keep it on, Phil. Okay, welcome back to PATV. Hey, 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 hey what do you hey. say? All right, let's get down to business. You know, we are nothing this show without your submissions. That's right, and we're almost nothing as it is now. <sighs> we're next to nothing. Well, no, I feel pretty good about myself today. It's not about you, Phil, it's about all the cutbacks. No, it's this. about me. It's a technological nightmare. Give them the address, homie www.publicaccess.tv.ca Excuse me, guys. Dot Sorry to interject. Oh, oh, you again. Interject? That's a big word, homie. Uh, well, actually, I got my degree off the back of a matchbox. You just check it off, send them 500 bucks, and then you uh, can be just like me. Institute. That's really right. good. A master's. You're one but, step, that takes Phil one step away from the street. Thank you. Well, well listen, listen, guys, I made a big mistake. Before, when I shut off all these screens, I realized that uh, that doesn't really use that much power because this is a virtual set. Oh, so we're just gonna shut the whole thing down if that's cool oh. with you guys. You know, uh, you know what we that is Yeah, yeah. Horrible. Good luck, guys. I got, I got a suggestion Wait. for efficiency. All right, boys, shut it down. Cut. We can burn the script. Well, let's burn the script to the show. Ah, oh, he didn't hear me. See, when this starts happening, you know what happens next? They what? start paying you in cash. I could live with that. I could go for that. <laughs> hey guys, it's a little bright in here. Can we hit the lights too? Oh, the no! shit is No! Anton, I demand an explanation for these shenanigans. What do you have to say? John, I'm sorry. This is just... This is just too much for me right now. This relationship is too much pressure and... How'd you find out about us anyway? Well, it doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure this stuff out. I hired a surveillance photographer just to make sure.
You know, the least you could have done was tell me. I'd be taking this a lot better than I am right now if you hadn't wasted my time. If you only told me you didn't want anything serious. So? That tart, she's a little more your style anyhow. You are a selfish little kid. So, who did you vote for? Uh, I didn't vote this time, Livy. I'm sick of voting. OMG, you didn't vote? L-M-F-A-O. <laughs> You're such a nerd. Stop harassing me. What? It's funny. What's funny? It's funny that you managed to maintain copy speak in real life conversation. It's getting to be a bad habit of yours. I know, I know. You're not the first person to tell me this. It's a terrible bad <laughs> habit that I must overcome. But let's not get off topic. Why didn't you vote this time? Because I couldn't vote online. But you can never vote online. The system's always bogged down. Uh, but see, I don't think it actually is. <laughs> I, I think the broadcasters are in bed with the cell phone companies, and it's all this ploy to get viewers to vote sending text messages. So cell phone companies make more money. <laughs> I mean, I'd be hard-pressed to believe online voting even exists, considering how many times I've received that error page. Oh, you're hilarious. So you think it's a conspiracy? Well, I wouldn't put it past the conglomerates. <laughs> My remarkable psychic powers tell me you are... Rakanja Jahari. How the hell did you guess that? I know all about your fascination with sassy <laughs> African politicians. <laughs> you are unbelievable. I'll do my best. <laughs> okay, your turn. Hmm. Okay. Who am I? Okay. Got it? Yep. Are you a male? No. Okay, so you're a female then. Fantastic deductive reasoning skills you got there, Livy. Stop it. Are you beautiful? I think I'm beautiful. Are you an outstanding, fabulous, smart, sexy, sultry specimen who won't let anything stand in her way? <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey! <laughs> Are you a blonde? Mm, no. Not a blonde. Are you young? That's a matter of perspective. Like... Our age young. Yes. Are you famous? No. So you're not a celebrity? No, that's two questions. But this is inherently problematic because well, we met over the internet and I don't know anyone you know and you don't know anyone I know and you seem to take this game pretty seriously so I don't think you'd pick a trick person necessarily. Well, it's kind of a trick. Is it me? <laughs> Olivia, I know this probably isn't the best time, but I have something really important to tell you. John? Who the hell is this?
John, I demand an explanation for these shenanigans. What do you have to say? Livy, I'm gay. Well, they got rid of the puppet, Phil. Yep, it's not the news or weather, it's us. Welcome yep. back, buddy. Yeah, well, it's, it's always me anyway. I'm just not doing this with the teeth. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. Are we talking about the fantasy or the... Uh, uh, well, I was a repair guy two episodes ago, right? Ben? Everybody, this is the real... Sn this is a tool, the guy he behind the... Sn at, well, what? It's <laughs> this, but from when the... Sn uh, oh. oh. You just, oh, it's so, it's so on the tip of your tongue, When you isn't see it? us together, it's a very special moment. Absolutely. It's a Harold and Kumar with a tan moment. It's like you know. Chewbacca with his head off, or R2-D2 with his leg off, <laughs> or C-3PO with the one eye open. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I guess so, but we're about the same, you know, which would be three C-3PO? I mean, without the, I guess. With the so. one eye open. Or like a Jawa, like but like a midget, <laughs> <laughs> or an Ewok, but a child. <laughs> All right. You're making it sad again, Phil. No, this but this is like, and there's no Santa Claus, and there's no Tooth Fairy. It's your mother putting that nickel or whatever. I don't know how rich you guys are. Right. You know, under your pillow. I'm sorry, we're a reality show. This is reality. That's right. But the Kardashians, they're fake. Everything about them. Everything about them. And that's what this show's about. Um, sorry we got shut down, buddy, but it, we'll keep it natural, just me and you. Yeah. And uh, maybe tune in next week. More drama. Things might be back. We'll, maybe. We could, we could, I'll, I'll win that puppet back. We'll, we'll, we'll kick ass. Yeah. Yeah. You just Can I say ass? Yeah, you could say. I don't know. I mean, I'll kick donkey. It's not, yeah. it's not for me to know. I'm a host. You see how I walk in and out of the... Uh, yeah. See I, see, I haven't got those skills yet. I'm a puppeteer. No, like, you got to believe it. I do this it, all the time. Yeah. No, don't do that. That's, no, why? No, because that's called sexual assault. <gasps> Ooh, okay. <laughs> I, yeah, I just... See? Yeah. It's a, big, see, it's a it's small a difference between performing and, and indictable offenses. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fine line between genius. And street and, person, you know, like yeah, same thing. It's, yeah, don't it, do that. Sometimes on the it can subway. be both, though, can't they? No, that's one thing on the subway, man. It's a bad thing. Don't be doing that. See, that's why you got a school. Yeah, I learned this. I learned this last year, dude. I In your own that. institute. Yes, the Phil Guerrero Institute. I will start to make my own school. I think my own. Get a master's degree and whatever you want. You just fill it in. Absolutely. Yep. And it, fill in the subject. Thirty-four ninety-five plus shipping. See you next time on Me and Him Show. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we are. And who's that? Oh, we have... Is this part of the show when you're talking? Oh, okay. We're in a big empty warehouse. Do I have to be so close to you? No, this is, in TV it looks far away. It's TV land. Oh, you'll learn stuff, sugar. <laughs> <laughs> no. What? What? Uh, let's cut to music videos. <laughs> Says the guy wearing a leather jacket next to the village. Oh. Speaking <laughs> of the village people, yeah, let's watch some music videos. Excuse me, it's not leather, it's wax cotton. Excuse me. <laughs> I totally been breathable, hey. yet completely waterproof. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to cut the leather jacket too. Forest. <sighs> I want to tell you about my biggest poor.